and I will command all those that see me as their spiritual fathers and mentor, and I will command all the associates who are associated to us, and I will command all those that the Lord has helped me to ordain or anoint to keep these seasons, even if they don't believe it, in honor of me, and Yahweh will honor them. Because it is not me that speaketh tonight, it is the Lord that speaketh. Colossians chapter 3. We will start with verse 9 and then we will go back to start reading from verse 1. And we will read it from the whole man Bible. But just before Colossians, I want us to read Romans chapter 3 verses 12 to 19. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was was lost. that scripture in the Holman version, Holman Bible. I want us to read it together. I mean, you can read it as I read it, but I want you to concentrate. It says, all have turned away. Together they have become useless. There is no one who does good. There is not even one. Verse 13. Their throat is as an open grave. Bakun and Sugeskia come and cover in a fan. In Sumbu de Baiki, don't susa when you are chicken. Don't susa when you are chicken. Wahala. Bakun and Suyazama come and cover in it. Their throat is like an open grave. When they open their mouths, it's to put another human being in the grave, into problems, into trouble. There is no truth found in the church anymore. 
There is so much unrighteousness. It were as if Christ had not died. It's as if we are unbelievers as they should preach to. We have entered into a season where people are not afraid or ashamed to tell a lie. And where if you stand against them, you irritate them, you annoy them, you, they, 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 they become impatient with you. You can see it in their faces, my friend. They are fearful days. They frighten me. But then they are not surprising like I said. They are not meant for gunagune. It is for you to hit yourself and say, Lord, I can see the days you spoke of. I must make heaven all season. Don't start criticizing the church. Each time you criticize the church, you are criticizing Christ. Don't. He spoke about these days. If they do not come to pass, then you have made him a liar. Don't criticize the church. You will be criticizing Christ. Come out from amongst them. And be ye separate. That is the command. Obey that command. And don't criticize. Sir, he chose to do this, but I thought it was wrong, so I chose to do the other thing. Forgive me if I did wrong. And then let that person you are calling sir become the judge between right and wrong, but you do the right. Don't condemn the other. I say, sir, he chose to do this, but I thought it was wrong, so I chose to do that. Now, even if you became wrong, you wanted to do right, the sir will judge accordingly. And don't start criticizing the man who decided to do wrong. Whether he did it deliberately or not is not your problem. Your problem is that you still remain qualified in heaven. These are the days when you must separate your garments between the unclean and the clean. It's not the time to criticize the church and grow weak. You'll find out that the more you criticize the church, the more your own righteousness begins to reduce. The more your own zeal to serve God is reduced, the more your prayer life reduces, the more you cannot do it. Because the more you feel weakened by the unrighteous, or by the unrighteousness of the unrighteous, it's time to overlook all unrighteousness and run the race. That scripture says, their throat is an open grave. When they open their mouths, they are putting somebody in the grave. But that, look, whether you are born again or not born again is the same thing as the same witchcraft. A lying spirit is a witchcraft spirit. It's an open grave. He said they deceive with their tongues. Hey, what does the Bible call them? Vipers. Vipers venom is under their lips. Ah, may God deliver us. Verse 14. No, this is telling us the situation of the church that is supposed to be born again. Now. These days you give a job, you have to give it to three people because you are sure two will fail to do the job. They never get any job done in these last days. Not correctly. Because their minds are not there. Their minds are on something else. Somebody has a job to do but his mind is somewhere else. So three times, or often times, Three out of four, he does it wrong because his mind is not there. Then he does one wrong out of restitution for feeling guilty for doing th three wrong. And he thinks you should forget the other three and clap and take him to the next phase. That seems to be what I'm seeing in the church now. The church enjoys doing the wrong things as majority and the right things as the minority. You should beat your chest and say, Lord, have mercy, save me from hell. But you still have no right to condemn them, to condemn Christ and his church. Keep away from it and tell the Lord, save your church. He will find a way of saving his church. I didn't hear somebody say amen. amen. He says their mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. They are always complaining, nobody is recognizing me. 
That is why you are not being recognized. Because you are expecting somebody to recognize you. What about the one who is upstairs? Have you done right? Did he not recognize you? If you did wrong, you better repent. Because if he does not recognize you and everybody else recognizes you, you are still in trouble. Look at that. Their mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. So please, don't think that when you don't hear people condemn you when you have done a wrong, and say, no, don't worry, and they give a reason for that weakness, don't think that they are helping you. You know why? Maybe they have followed my advice like I have followed my own advice not to condemn Christ and his church. So they are not talking. You must be your own gauge, your own, right, your own mirror. Because when he says stop, he will not do your wrong, but you keep on doing it and he's carrying you along. When we start entering heaven, they will carry you right, left hand and he will go right hand and you will be shocked. He said, but God, he was not always, yes, he did not because he did not want to condemn me. Do not be deceived at people who clap for you after you have done unrighteousness and encourage you to run on. You better check yourself and reprove yourself. I asked the Lord, he said, preach it, tell the people tonight because I'm about to do a new thing. And the days we are entering are going to be very conflicting days. The righteous will prosper, but they will understand the purpose and the reason for their prosperity. He says their mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Verse 15. Their feet are swift to shed blood. 16. Ruin and wretchedness in their, are in their parts. 17. And the part of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes anymore. Because they think God is too far away. Now it's a human thing. Now we know that whatever the law says, speak to those who are subject to the law. So that every mouth may be shut and the world may become subject to God's judgment. Now listen. Do you know why these people are beginning to fall short? It's because they judge themselves by the laws of the world. They are beginning to measure their own success by the success of the world. The world has five cars. I have one car. I am still a struggling man. They are beginning to measure. Their line of measurement is no longer by the word and the righteousness of God. It's now by the, the ways of the world. Why? Because the world worships worldly prosperity. And they want worship. And because they want worship, they have changed the righteousness of grace into a form of the law in their hearts. So this law of the world is the one ruling them, not the laws of grace in Christ Jesus. But they, they have crossed the line and they don't know. They have missed it and they don't know. They say, what am I doing in throne room? When I will have prospered, my colleagues are prospering in living faith. Who told you? Go to living faith and see whether they are prospering like that. The wicked cannot prosper anywhere. Did you hear what I said? Whether in living faith or in deeper life or in redeemed Christian church, the wicked. It was here I told you, all our staff who left us and joined the other churches because they said they had not prospered. Those churches sat them within three months with all their righteousness and their blagado. Oh, meaning that we managed them enough for 10 years. We manage them enough for five years. And we manage every day preaching, repent! They couldn't last three months. They couldn't last one year in those churches. Why? It's either that they found people that were more crooked than them and dealt with them in those places, or they found people who will make heaven and cannot bear their iniquity, and they dealt with them in those places. It's one of the two. If you think you are wicked, you will always find a man who is more wicked than you. If you think you are righteous, you will find another righteous man who will humble you by his righteousness. His own is too much. All you need is to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
Don't weigh yourself with another man. Run the race. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Keep on running. Don't compare yourself. With, I don't compare myself with any man here in Nigeria or in the universe. I don't. I don't look at the way they run. I don't look at their success. If I were mindful of them, I would make heaven. Because I will always say those, see those who are ten times better, they seem to be doing it right and doing all the work, so I'm wasting my time. Or I will see those who are ten times lower, worse than myself, that I will beat my chest and say, hey, I'm doing well, relax, my friend. Stop being tensed up. No! I have put my hands upon the plug. I will not look back. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Now we know that whatever the law says speaks to those who are subject to the law. Speaks to those who are subject to the law. And now you are beginning to return back to the place, to the standards and the judgments of those that live by the law. That is why the punishment of the law will follow you. That is what the church is going back to. The law. The law. The law. Our bishops are beginning to buy longer bishop regalia. They want to beat the Roman Catholics and by inference beat the Anglicans. In fact, they don't copy the Anglicans anymore. Before it was Anglicans that were the safest to copy when it came to those regalias. They will look for an Anglican bishop's own and wear. But now they go for the Roman Catholic one that is longer and taller than that of the Anglican. So that when they wear, the cap goes to heaven. Have you not noticed that the Pope does not wear those long caps anymore? Why the Pope is becoming humbler, the Pentecostal is growing bigger. Then they put on the garments. The colors are more than the colors you will ever see anywhere. It's like a shop in China. Those of you who have been to China know what I mean. It's bling, 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 bling everywhere. So these days, the Pentecostal bishop, you say bishop was ordained yesterday. The cloth he was used to ordain is bigger than that of an archbishop anywhere. There you know it was the Matthew he was looking for. It was, it, it was the position he was looking for. It was not about service. We have subjected ourselves to the law. And that's why the wages of sin, the wages of the law will follow us. <laughs> we just finished a wedding in America. By the way, our sister Marilyn got married eventually. And the throne was well represented. Come on, let's give Jesus a big clap of him. Uh, those of you who don't understand, she's 63 years old. Her husband died more than 25 years ago. And many, many years later, about 30 years ago, the husband died. 30 years ago, she's 60 something years. That means the husband must have also died as a young man. And she had remained like that until now when God gave her a husband in her 60s and the husband too is in his 60s. So it was old Papa's wedding, you know. And we celebrate them today. They are watching us on television. God bless you. And God keep your marriage and prosper you. I didn't hear the people say amen. And because she will not soil her garments, she will not live by the laws of the world. And because the other man whose wife died close to 10 years ago, will also not soil his garments, and will not live by the laws of the world. God in his own time found them because he thought it was still, it was still needful for them to have companionship and still chose for them husbands and wives because they lived by the law of God, not by the laws of the world. I didn't hear somebody say amen to that. And in that marriage, they came to me and requested, you must make for us a covenant of salt with the Lord. 
a covenant of sweetness that in the rest of our lives will be, will be sweetness to the world. Ah, we will be joy to the world. Oh, these are people who have set their eyes onto heaven. My friend, as you are getting older, why are you becoming worldly? You are getting older and your eyes is in the things of the world. The escape you didn't do when you were younger is now you want to start doing it. What are you catching up with? He says you have made yourself subject to the law. Now the reason why I bought this is that the bishop who did the marriage, Mike is laughing. He's a Pentecostal bishop, he's my friend. He was to be one of our speakers many years ago here. He couldn't make it. He will have come again this year, but his health is stopping him from coming. He stood by me. I think I wore this collar. This was the way I dressed with a, with a coat on top or a jacket on top. Now, listen, because this is very important. And he stood there, and a point, at a point he turned and looked at me. He said, I'm sorry, I look overdressed. Now, I didn't say anything. He's a very old bishop. He has been bishop for many years. He is in the age group of the Edilongs. They ministered together, they did things together. They were involved in some of these civil rights movements, but kept their faith and kept the lines of the Lord. But he's a very quiet person a beloved brother and while we were dressing he was dressing when he put the long cap and it was looking too long he turned again and apologized and he explained to me how he came about that cap how he became about the garment how it was choosing for him ah, let the world not choose for you your destiny and that's the point I wanted to make. You have your own choices. Don't choose to play to the gallery and live by the laws of the world because it is by those laws that God will judge you. Don't! Let a greater visitation than that of the world follows you. He's a very humble man, so I was not surprised at his story. And that day, it was very hot. He was sweating in it. He was not feeling fine. But he had to carry that cross that Jesus had not placed on him. That the laws of men put upon him. Many of us are carrying loads Jesus has not put upon us. Throw it down! It's not your garment. David threw away that one. The thing was too heavy for him and took his sling. And the giant that heavy Amos could not bring down was brought down by a sling. Why don't you wear the garment grace has put upon you? And stop dressing the garments that the law is putting upon you. Oh, I want them to respect me because I'm the chief executive of uh, throne room and that is why I'm buying a Bentley. The reason enough is enough for me to have accident with that Bentley. God does not cover it because I am wearing it as the glory of throne room. No, the day you see me ride a Bentley, I am wearing it for myself as the glory of the Lord in my life. It's not to glorify throne room. Did you hear what I said? I never glorify throne room. I glorify God. I don't wear garments God has not put upon me. All the vehicles you see me drive, forget the ones I have given, I'm not talking about that. But the vehicles you see me decide to drive, I had peace from God to drive them. And I never bought them with money. My money? They say, Subafa. Most of these big vehicles, before you miss, you do a miscarriage of justice. Buy a swane. The ones I sold, I didn't tell you or consult you before I sold them and put them into the gospel. But the ones I kept, I had command. Because the covenant by which they were bought, 
Those who bought them, they spoke a covenant attached to it that couldn't remove. I'm still keeping the Guta one. Not because I don't want to sell it. If they gave me, I would have sold it. They made me make a very stupid vow. That I cannot sell it except with their permission. And all oh, a new one is giving me, and they have refused to give the new one. The Oguta people have refused to give the new one. They are king. When a king makes you vow before a community, they go and sell it and see what will happen to you. But people sit there and they say, hey, could they have big cars? Let him give us. If I give you them, those cars will kill you. Why? They have covenants attached to them. I am clothed with what God has clothed me with. I've never clothed myself by a strange thing because I'm competing with another pastor. Let him go and buy ten times bigger things. It won't bother me. What grace gives me is what I wear. Begin to wear what grace gives you, not what the law gives you. Not what you struggle for like that. Oh, you see me have a big house? Build a big house? A regime and dunia, but I will tell you, three quarter plus of the monies that build those houses were not mine. The curtains in the house are not mine. They were bought by people who are here now. They are covenant grace covering. Grace clothes me. Most of the trousers I buy, I, 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 I wear, were given me, especially the shiny ones. If you see me wear a shiny one, I come around. Now you make me look, when you see me looking young, there is a human being behind it. It's not just the Holy Spirit. Grace covers me. Let grace cover you. In the coming year, God will rain bread for you. That is a symbol of grace. The bread he rains is the one you will eat by day. That is what that scripture says. He will give you enough bread. He has chosen them to clothe you. We are it, and no demon can tear it down. You will ride cars, you will build houses. What grace has given you? Grace. That is why I like that second version. It was grace. You better learn it because I didn't hear you sing it well. It was grace that moved my heart to says and grace will take me home grace it is grace that will carry me home back to the master i live a life of grace our testimony should be the testimony of grace this is the gift of god in your life grace will take me home grace has clothed me grace built these buildings oh you don't know let me tell you you know i don't keep a city I sent my check today and it bounced 10 times. I thought I had the money. I was going to pay school fees. I, I signed the check. I wasn't doing it by faith. I truly believed I had the money. Even though I knew I was, I was playing with <laughs> a borderline. But by faith, I had the money. I wrote it. They went all the way to Joss. After punishment, going to Joss. When proudly he's supposed to Kure's bank account. How can Kure lack school fees for his children? Now, I'm not asking for a gift here. Grace quickly covered my nakedness immediately while they were yet in the bank. Did you hear what I said? But I was so angry with the accountant. I said, accountant, we have a bank here. Why didn't you check before going to disgrace me in Joss? Joss is a bigger city. Kavanchan is a village. The disgrace here will be smaller in Jaws. <laughs> they will announce it on television. I said, foolish boy. 
You see how you release the nakedness of your father before the people. My friend, I will deal with you when you come back. Of course, some of you know I will talk like that. I say, you're coming back here to meet me. The Kafanchan Bank already knows me. And they know the grace I operate. They know my city. That I don't have a hundred million in the bank account like the Lagos ministers are thinking I have. Like EFCC is thinking I have. Ah, they will be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody had to quickly borrow me money. It was borrowed. And pumped it, put it. He told the man to stay there. Withdrew money from somewhere else. Pumped it into it. He said, when you come back home, we'll settle this account. <laughs> and I said, grace again has made me whole. Grace will take you home. Don't be cluttered by what you don't have. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation for every one of us that believe it. Somebody shout hallelujah. I use this to let you know. Look, when you give me a big gift, I go on my knees and I put my head before him on the ground. And I say, I bow down and worship Yahweh. When you give me a small gift that cannot, it's not even enough to buy the next meal. I go down on my knees and I bow down. I worship your holy name, Yahweh. It is grace that clothes me. Let us be contented with what grace makes provision for us. Then you will make heaven. Then God will see you in that state and give you what no man can ever give you. I have never lacked because of this attitude. I am not a pauper. I am not a beggar. Don't be deceived. I am not. He supplies my needs every day. And did you see that scripture? He said every day he will do what? Somebody say rain. Rain bread. Let that follow you tonight. Let's go back to that Colossians chapter 3, verse 9. Colossians 3, 9. Can we all read it together? Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his practices. Now note, are you still practicing the deeds of the old man? He said, do not lie to one another. Since you have put off the old man with his practices, verse 10, or oh, is that the end of that verse? And have put on, everybody, and have put on the new man who is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of his creator. Now note, the new man has his creator, the old man has his creator. So the new man is being renewed according to the knowledge of his creator. Who is his creator? Jesus Christ. He's the one who created your new man. He will take care of your new man. And that is why if you go back to verse 1 of the same scripture, I will just read it, verse 1. So if you have been raised with the Messiah, seek what is above, where the Messiah is, seated at the right hand of God. Seek what is above. Set your minds on what is above, not on what is on the earth. Otherwise, you will now start living by the law. You know, some of you are saved by grace, but you live by the law. You judge yourself by the law. You want to wear the cloth of the law. That is why the arrows of the law are the ones that affect and influence your life. He says, set your minds on what is above, not on what is in on the earth. Verse 3. For you have died, and your life is hidden with the Messiah in God. I repeat, for you have died, and your life is hidden with the Messiah in God. Verse 4. When the Messiah, who is your life, is revealed, then you will be revealed with him in glory. Can somebody say amen to that? 
Now, do you know why I stopped there? I stopped there just now. You can read back to verse 9. But I stopped there just now because next year is the year of the Messiah. How many of you remember I told you that in the last winds of the Spirit? It's the year of Messianic appointed times. When Messianic prophecies begin to be fulfilled in the lives of men. 57, 76 of the Hebrew calendar. 2016 of the Gregorian calendar is the year of the appointed times of the Messiah. Appointed times of God. When everything that was appointed for your life will be fulfilled. And that's why it says you should look up. You should look up. Everything is looking up, looking up, so that when the Messiah, who is your life, is the one renewing that new man, he is your testimony. When he is revealed, then you will also be revealed with him in glory. Not in wretchedness. Not in rags. I'm going to stop here tonight. I'm going to stop here tonight. But I've heard of the Lord. Build an altar that speaks to you. Do not seek these things that you have been seeking. Shed them off. Remove them now. So that you can survive what is happening. Because some of you, your little compromises with the world, if you continue in the next season, is going to create problems for you. Be clothed with grace. When you prosper, it is the master that prospers you. When you buy your Mercedes Benz, it's the master. You didn't steal the money. You didn't even loan the money. The master walked out the miracle of a Mercedes Benz. And you always know the master's car because it will always come to you as a okay. It comes to you without struggle. It comes to you without pain. And I see that grace every time. It comes to you without pain. I went to buy a vehicle for my family in the States. And I told you I don't hide anything. And they told us to buy a big bus. You know this bus, transit bus. To carry the whole family. Now God, they give children plenty. And God give me children plenty. When they all got one car, is not enough. We have to go in two cars because there are too many. It's only in Africa we give birth to five children. And give birth to seven children and give birth as the Holy Spirit leads. In America, they control the Holy Spirit. In China, there is a law against the Holy Spirit. And the law is that you must give birth to one child or go to prison. There's a law against the Holy Spirit. Did you hear what I said? Because the Holy Ghost said, be fruitful. And China says, if you multiply, you will go to, to jail. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? They don't allow Holy Ghost to lead anybody anymore. So me, I went as the Holy Ghost led. And so I carried the yoke that comes with that kind of leading. And they went and brought me a beautiful boss. Transit bus, Ford. You know this Ford Transit. American vehicles are cheaper. Oh, this is cheaper. It can help you. It can do this. I said, oh God, can you choose for me a vehicle? Clothe me with what grace will allow me. And we said, okay, let us go and think as a family. We were all there that day. I wanted, it's democracy in my house. I wanted the children to be led with me of the Holy Ghost. And that day, they refused to be led for a bus. And I thought a bus was okay. They said, no, daddy, <laughs> you will drive this alone. So that night, as I prayed, suddenly I put on my internet, and I saw this enterprise, this school, uh -huh, enterprise, they call them enterprise. They, 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 they hire cars, it's car hire, out. And they were advertising sales. And I had the Lord say, go to them, your car is there. And you know, I went. They gave me a beautiful car for a cheap price. A 2014 car that can carry me and my old house. I won't tell you which car. 
that can carry me and all my children. Maybe another time when the Holy Ghost comes upon me, you will hear the car. You know, I told you I don't have a secret. But they gave me that car for a cheap price. And I said, are you sure this is the cost of this car? 11,000 miles. It can carry eight of us at the same time. It is called what? Grace. Grace will always appear to glorify you when you need help, when you wait upon the Lord. I have no this outside my means. I have never lived outside grace. What he will not do, I will not do. I know the interesting thing. When I went to buy that car, they were begging me to break the one regulation I have never broken in my life. That I must collect a loan. I said, me and you loan. Americans are loan. That is why they live by their law. They said, somebody of your own, in our bank system, they call you the man with the gold card. I said, I don't have gold card. They said, that is what is written on your name here. I said, I don't have gold card. They said, then you qualify for gold card. Take it. Now Satan tempts you. He said, there are benefits. He said, counting the benefits until my mouth began, began to water. And that if you live with this gold card thing, gradually it prepares you for citizenship. Who told you I want to be American citizen for God's sake? Because you are already operating in their gold. You are wearing the garments God has not asked you to wear. Debt. It was a credit card they were trying to sell me. That the credit card would be paying me for using it. Not me paying them for using it. I said, hey, which kind last days lost with this? You collect credit card, it is paying you, you are not paying it to. Ah, and to make it, two mommy water spirits gathered to carry my leg down. Two beautiful ladies, they just came from nowhere. They sat on that chair to convince me also that that credit card is good for my soul. You see how the law can be appealing? Today, I release the fire of God to set you free. From every seducing spirit that has torn your life from the standards of the Lord. Somebody say, my God arise. My fire set me free now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I didn't hear somebody shout, Amen. So we all go through the temptations you go through every day. But we allow the laws of the Lord to hang in front of us. We look at the world through the mirror of Jesus. Whatever the mirror will not allow us, we remove ourselves from it. That is how we have survived. Otherwise, this Kure, you will have lost him long time ago. We face the same things. I will not allow to be clothed with strange garments. I will not allow to be clothed with strange garments. I want us to stand up on our feet, please. Let's rise up on our feet. We bow down and worship Yahweh.
the most important part of this message. It says, each one of you must build an altar now. An altar with which Yahweh will relate with you. But the first thing you do with that altar is to ask the altar to shed off all the strange incumbrances of the law. Shed off. Let the altar start with you before it begins to relate with the world. Somebody say, let the altar of the Lord start with me. Can you say, my heavenly father, shed off my carnality. Shed off my compromises. Begin to take away these strange dresses. Can you begin to command the dresses to leave you and begin to ask God to lift away every strange imposition of carnality, every habit that is beginning to be cultivated in your life. You don't pray anymore. Ah, you don't do anything anymore. You don't study. You don't even go to church like before. You are always joining those who criticize the church to show them that you are self-righteous, that you are different from the rest of the church. Can you stop criticizing Christ and his church? Let him that thinks he stand take heed lest he falls. Remember that warning. Can you begin to ask God to forgive you today? Lord, the iniquities of my heart, I repent of them, I confess them. The iniquities of my flesh, of my body, of my spirit, of my soul, the iniquities of my mouth, of my tongue, I repent of them. Ah, every kind of long throat, the laws of the world by which I have operated, undress me of them, strip them out of my life. I repent. Satan, the Lord rebuke you in my life. Get out of my life. Can you begin to cast out the devil out of your own life? Start by yourself. Begin to dismantle. Begin to plead the blood of Jesus. The altar you build should be able to bring you forgiveness. If it cannot bring you forgiveness, it cannot bring you deliverance. Are you a priest? Every sharp practice you have entered into to survive, to eat food, to drive your car, to build your house, every sharp practice, can you tell the Lord to forgive you? Some of you even divide your churches in order to be able to gain things from them. You knock one minister, one, one, person, one member against another member. Some of you judge unevenly. A richer man is guilty. The poorer man is right. You turn the judgment against the poorer man so that you can keep the richer man. Ah, pastor. Was it in America? Yes, it was in America during the week. A pastor was removed because he slept with the wife of another member. And when the church rose up to punish him, he said he was in love with her and that it was God's will. Pastors, where are we going to? And the American law agrees with him. Do you know that there is a law that grants divorce if you don't like your wife anymore in Malawi? That you can marry another woman? It's legal now to commit adultery in Malawi. The law was signed into law recently. I repeat, it's legal to commit adultery in Malawi. If you see a woman you like, why not? It's part of the flesh. Satanic, the times and the seasons of the Antichrist are here, and nobody is putting it to heart. Don't you know it will give the church license also to commit adultery? Before there was a law that punished. Now there is no law that punishes. The law gives you crown. Just as it's legal, it's legal. I think in the same Malawi, 
For a man to marry a man and a woman to marry a woman, lesbianism is no longer a sin in Malawi. Sodom is taking over. We are going to speak against Sodom in the morning. Build your altar and let it remove your own nakedness first. You will tell the Lord, take out my own nakedness. That pastor has lost his church. He is not repentant. He still wants to marry that woman. The woman agreed with him at the beginning. But recently the woman said, no, I am going back to my husband. And the husband is confused. Which kind of Christianity is this? Oh, my wife can go back and come back. Seki build a seki ukune enzu. Na sekeki sondea, kijeki dao, inkin dao. Na sekeki nebiu. Ah! What kind of world are we living as Christians? We are going by the standard of the world, the world, the world, the law of the world. Is becoming our appetizer. Our appetites are being ruled by it. And we are not admitting to ourselves, we are, we are still calling it grace. What kind of grace is that? You don't know the meaning of grace. Oh, that pastor is still fighting back. Grace, under the doctrine of grace. Grace. And the American law is on his side. So you can't, you punish him, he will take you to court. So the church said, we voted, they did democracy too, we voted, and by our voting, we will not have you to be pastor. It's our fundamental human right. That is the only way they could remove the pastor. By using the law of the world to defeat the pastor too. They voted him out, so he went out. And they now called another pastor, who is my friend, to take over a church. A church that was 2,000 people, now barely has 500 people. 2,000 people and glorious pastor when he preaches pastors we must build an altar that takes away our nakedness and restores the true grace let the laws of heaven rule over us young man are you in the secondary school grace will take you up grace will change your life grace will make you a ruler in this nation I didn't hear somebody say amen. amen. One of the first cars that were ever built in Nigeria by a Nigeria was built by a born again Christian, a Siogu, a former full gospel president. He was my leader in NIFES. He was a national president. Listen, because this is very important. A Siogu is still alive, he's a very old man now. But he's alive. I think he struggled to be governor of one of the eastern states at one point. Born again. Who told you you can't meet your standard as a born again? I have told you here over, over and over. The richest woman in Africa is a Christian. Born again. Evangelist. And she gives it to God every day. Grace will take you there. Somebody say grace. grace. Can you say Heavenly Father? Heavenly Father. I reject every strange garment in my body. In the name of Jesus, let the yoke of its witchcraft be broken. In my character, in my spirit, in my imagination, Satan the Lord rebuke you. I come against you tonight. Get out of my life. Get out of my body. Get out of my spirit. Get out of my eyes. Out of my sight. In the name of Jesus. Can somebody shout amen? God is telling us in this August, build an altar with which Yahweh will relate with you in the coming month, from the coming month, because it's by that altar that he will earn bread. He will sustain you by the days. Messianic prophecies will be fulfilled on that altar. If you don't have one, then I'm sorry, there is nothing we can do about your life. You must build your altar. Oh, God will not hold your blood in my hands. 
I have told you the truth. I have not preached by the ways of the world. I have not even preached by my own standards. I have preached by the standard of the word of God. So that you may live by him and move by him and have your whole being by him. I have not preached according to the gospel of whatever is my own lust or weakness or anything. I have preached by the standard of the demand of God, both on you and on me. Your blood is not in my head. Can you say, my father, there is now therefore no more condemnation unto them who are in Christ Jesus, who live not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Today, in the name of Jesus, Take away condemnation from me. Take away condemnation from me. I connect with the Messiah that by the blood of the Messiah, let my life be washed clean now. In the name of Jesus, let my restoration begin tonight. In the name of Jesus. I didn't hear somebody shout amen. Now, I want you to do something. Can you hold your hands to your left, link them like a chain? Link up your hands together. To your left and to your right. Link it up like a chain. Can you lift it up like that to the heavens? You can change the way you are interlocked if it will create problems for you and hold your hands properly up. My father, as we lift these hands up, so do we lift the hands of Mr. President, President Muhammad Buhari, that tonight, oh God, as we enter into September, his spirit will not fail him. He will not fail this nation. In the name of Jesus Christ. That Lord, no curse shall rest upon this nation. As a result of General Buhari. In the name of Jesus Christ. That tonight, the Holy Ghost will take over September. He will not establish a law that will kill us. He will establish a law that will move us forward. Every choice in the government shall be healing to Nigeria. Today we uphold his hand. His hand shall not fail. Those who are praying for him to die suddenly. My father and my God, if that was not in your record in power, cancel that prayer in Jesus' name. Rather than have somebody who will bring further confusion, we release life into General Buhari. Let him fulfill his time in Jesus' name. Oh, my father, let there be no further confusion in Nigeria. Let the blood of Jesus wash away confusion. Next month is going to decide Buhari's future. That is what you told me. Today, let it be the future that comes from you. Yeah. Let it not be the future from the agitation of man. Yeah. I don't care whether they be Christian or Muslim or traditionalist. Lord, man shall not decide the future of General Buhari. Yeah. Only the God of heaven will decide his future. Yeah. So let that future be decided in September in Jesus' name. Yeah. By whatever wisdom you give him in this coming month, let it speak. For it had begun to speak already this month, yesterday and today, the first appointments began. You are setting the pattern for September. My father, September shall take Nigeria forward. September shall not take Nigeria backward. Set an altar under September. Let it bring sustenance to your church. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can you wave those hands and say, Our God arise. In the name of Jesus, Nigeria shall not fail. 
in Jesus' name. Can somebody say amen? amen. Come on, let's give Jesus a big clap of him somewhere. Can we pray one more agreement prayer? We don't need to link up your hands this time. For two more rulers. I called three rulers today during my preaching, Buhari, Netanyahu, and Putin. For me, Buhari is the connection, is the connection of the timepiece in heaven for what is to happen over Nigeria. For Israel and the rest of the world, Netanyahu is. Note the rest of the world. Then Putin stands in his own class, different. They are going to decide the change of balance in the world. China is about to be announced in the coming year, but China is being announced in weakness, not in strength. Its economy is failing, yet it is growing. Did you hear what I just said? Economy failing. The yen is falling. But its economic growth is growing. It's a mystery. How can your economy grow without your currency? China is about to cause a disbalance in the nations next year of the earth. China. China is a nation to watch. But for God to make the nations do his will, he is making all their presidents lose control. The Chinese president does not know whether to commit harakiri, commit suicide, or not. Because the economy, I mean the yen is going down. He is beginning to disagree with his cabinet for the first time. They have been the most united cabinet in the world. It's a sign that Jehovah is taking his seat so that no man will be sure of himself except inside of him. That is why we have to pray for Buhari. If we put our trust in the hand of man, it will fail us. God has to take over. Just the announcement today, those who are grumbling are already grumbling. Those who are clapping are clapping. He announced his secretary to government today. He announced his chief of staff today. He even announced a colonel that showed us paper in Kaduna State who sacked the largest number of people you, that can be sacked, Colonel Hamid, as part of his staff. Did you hear what I just said? So those who are clapping are clapping. Those who are grumbling, and it is not September yet. The main cabinet has not been announced. Let the will of God be done in heaven. Oh, you don't understand what I'm talking about. Every president will need the help of God. September is going to test the nations. September, there is going to be a rewinding. I'm that's why we are speaking against the spirit of Sodom tomorrow. Sodom must not rear its head. Did you hear what I said? Can you say, God arise? My inheritance shall stand in the coming season. I connect it to you before September. Call it forth for me in Jesus' name. I didn't hear somebody say amen. Can you say, as the new year of Israel begins, let a new year begin with me. A new year of rejoicing. A new year of shouting. A new year of joy. I enter into that covenant of joy and gladness.